Hello anime fans, this is Trixie the Golden Witch, presenting to you the second of 24 anime analysis videos, which I will be releasing bi-weekly over the course of this year. Backers who support my channel through backed.by slash we dash watch dash anime, goldenwitch.substack.com, and patreon.com slash goldenwitchfire get access to these videos a week early, and the biggest supporters have their names on screen here at the start of every video. If your name is here, then you contributed more to this video's ability to exist than everybody else who watched it combined, so I cannot thank you enough. Anyways, here's anime with personality. Personality is an interesting idea. You could describe anyone's personality, but it's unmistakable what you mean when you say that someone has a personality. Some people have what gets called a big personality, even. If I think about an anime with a big personality, the first and easily most obvious examples that shoot to mind are Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagann, Kill La Kill, Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Basically anything directed by Hiroyuki Maishi. One part of that is that the characters inside of these shows have big personalities, with Kamina from Gurren Lagann practically defining that phrase in his behavior. Another part of it is the total commitment to constant visual bombast, movement, loudness, high contrast colors, wild perspective shifts, and as much broken realism as it can get away with before it shatters the narrative. I think Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt possibly has the most personality of all director Imaishi's work, especially as it invites its many guest directors to pour their own personalities into each of its episodes, and it follows a script with no reservations about saying absolutely anything, no matter how raunchy, violent, or insane. Panty and Stocking makes its central theme explicit in the music video segment about anarchy, and I don't think a show has represented that theme better, nor ever been sluttier and more toxically hilarious than Panty and Stocking. The Legend of the Galactic Heroes has a sort of stuffy, collegiate personality, but it isn't so straight-laced that it's hard to hang with. When I think of this show's personality, of course I think about Yang Wen Li, the alcoholic history nerd whose lovability carries a bulk of the show. His speech about how alcohol has been a friend to humanity for thousands of years and then asking, can I abandon a friend? Is to me the soul of the whole story. A war epic invested in every detail of how the history of war has repeated itself and which aims to completely admonish the act of war even as it revels in the ultimate drama of war for its narrative. A lot of times, the personality brought to a series can be attributed to the personalities of its creative staff. Shinichiro Watanabe seems to build his shows from the personality outward, first figuring out a concept like bebop jazz in post-apocalyptic cyberpunk space, or hip-hop in feudal Japan, or high-concept sci-fi filtered through booby-obsessed madness, and so on, and then he gathers a team who can bring that personality to life with depth and flavor. In each of these shows, the main character embodies the overall personality of the show, and I think that resonance in personality between character and aesthetics is what makes his work so charismatic and broadly appealing. Some creators have a broader range of aesthetic tone under their belt, and yet the personalities of their shows share enough quirks to be unmistakable members of the same family. Dezaki Osamu directed shows in almost every genre, but always had this intense, visually focused style, which gives a similar emotional gravitas to stories about very different things. I could say the same about Akiyuki Shinbo's work, which would eventually form the foundation of the whole Studio Shaft's personality, such that even when their shows are almost nothing alike in writing or tone, the animation techniques used and approaches to emotional tonality are unmistakable between all of their shows. You can often tell right away when you're watching an anime series made by Studio Gainax, or Studio Bones, or Studio Ghibli, especially if it's directed by Hayao Miyazaki, or Production IG, or Madhouse, or Trigger, or PA Works, or Colorito, or any other studio whose core staff have created such a particular ethos towards animation that it can be recognized across shows even from different directors, in different genres, and with different character design styles. It can be hard to put into words exactly what each of these studios is doing that gives them that particular look without literally knowing how they're doing it, but it's the kind of thing that you recognize when you look at it. Sometimes though, the personality of a show springs so much from the characters and story that the presentation style, however much it contributes to the person 
personality of the series is ultimately secondary. Kodoma no Omocha is a great example of a show which has similar energy to other works from Akitaro Daichi, like Animation Runner Kuromi or Nurse Angel Lirica SOS, and yet each of those shows has such different personality that they aren't nearly as instinctively comparable as even the likes of Kill La Kill Promare and Gurren Lagan, which, while very different, draw a lot of comparison to themselves by how much they feel like three of a kind by sharing both writer and director. Kodocha is so much defined by the bombastic personality of main character Sana Kurata that the softer, quieter tone of Ririka, for instance, doesn't really call Kodocha to mind at all. It's easier to see the similarities between Sana and Kuromi, but the two-episode Kuromi OVA is really nothing but high-energy slapstick, while Kodocha has plenty of serious melodrama played straight alongside its more upbeat hijinks, which also gives these two shows very different overall impressions. I think shows with really evident personality tend to get more attention than shows with a more subtle thing going on, especially if that's in the artwork. You can take one look at anything from Masaaki Yuasa and be sure that it's got a distinctive personality from anything besides some of his other work. But if you looked at something like Showa Gendoku Rakugo Shinju in still images, you might not expect it to be incredibly unique from other anime. Its designs are distinctive, sure, and the characters have clear personality, but the overall personality of the show only really becomes clear through the storytelling, through the portrayal of the Rakugo performances and the ways that the characters think and communicate and the way that emotions are characterized and the types of decisions that the characters make, all of which create a very particular feeling that I've never really gotten from another anime. In the early 2000s, there were a lot of these shows with pretty unique personalities, but unassuming surface visuals. Stuff like Brigadoon, Infinite Revias, Figure 17, and all these other stories that didn't look like much on the surface, but diving into their worlds revealed incredibly unique and intriguing personalities. I think the genre most dependent on personality is Iyashike. It's hard to nail down the right nuance in a character who is endlessly good and likable without coming off as fake or too good to be true. When a story is trying to be spacious and do as little as possible, creating intrigue relies almost entirely on the idea that we would watch the character do basically anything. Mushishi is the most popular example I can think of where the stories are slow, relaxed, and largely uneventful, but where Ginko's contemplative demeanor and his relationship to the creatures inhabiting its utterly gorgeous environments drives the audience into that atmosphere with him. Yokohama Shopping Log is even less eventful or mysterious, but watchable because its cute android girl waiting for Gato is so pleasant to be around. Plus, she's a girl kisser. Soul Eater is another anime that comes to mind for just having a ridiculously distinct personality, and even though you can see some of the influences and maybe compare it to certain other things on a visual level, when you actually read it, it doesn't have the same vibe as any other comic. If you can think of any shows where the personality really struck you as unique and either imminently lovable or immediately hateable, let me know about it. How much does a show's personality affect your ability to enjoy it? And do you feel like anime with distinct personalities are often overlooked on the basis of their aesthetics or the surface details of their storylines? Let me know all your feelings in the comments, subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see more of my videos, and never forget to always remember, anime forever.